Hi, this is a video for dbpresents.com. Have you ever seen such a screen? A login page with Facebook, Google, Microsoft buttons, but the page does not belong to any of the, those companies? If so, they most probably use OpenID or OAuth2 uh, protocols to provide you with a possibility to use your social account to log in to that website. I am going to quickly explain you how it works as simple as I can without simplifying it too much. Before we jump to it, let's stop for a moment on the uh, traditional authentication concept. Most of the systems we know are built uh, this way. A user uses an internet browser to access a website. If the website requires authentication, user provides a username and a password, which are verified in the user's database. The database is owned by the website owner and is a part of that system. That is, a, is, that is simple and works well, but from the user perspective, there are multiple websites he has accounts in. Each website has its own accounts database. The user has separate accounts on all those websites. From security reasons, it is better for him to use different passwords and change all, all of them regularly. It is tough work to do for a user. It would be easier for the user if all those websites had a common user's database. He would have only have one account for all of them. Obviously, it should be done in a way that none of those websites had access to any other using user credentials, right? I do not want uh, Twitter to read my emails in Gmail, but it would be great if I could use uh, the same account to access both applications. Fortunately, there is a way to do that. It is called OpenID. It is a protocol without a centralized server. As it is open, there are many identity providers like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft. A user can authenticate to a relying party website using an identity provider. A user can even choose which one because a webmaster can configure multiple providers on the website. It is crucial that a user password is never sent to a relying party as the authentication takes place on an identity provider's page. OpenID is actually a good start, but the world has gone a little farther and broadly uses OAuth. The concept is very similar, so I will focus on OAuth from now on. So, what is OAuth? It is a protocol based on an open ID but extended a little to allow not only authentication but also authorization. It means that a relying party can know who the user is by name, get his email address, etc. Of course, with a user consent. If the user does not agree, it will not happen. Let's make sure we understand the difference between OpenID and OAuth. OpenID is used to make sure a user, uh, an owner of uh, the identity he claims he is. For example, an identity can be an account number like 123456 in Google+. Relying party still does not know email address of uh, that account in Google+. Uh, that is OpenID. The relying party can find out the user email address if it is authorized to query such information from Google+. The authorization is handled using OAuth protocol. As the purpose of OAuth protocol is understood, I will show you how it works in more details. I will focus on OAuth 2 as this is the latest and the most popular version of this protocol. 
I am going to present only one positive scenario supported by OAuth2, but uh, there are several more. It should be enough to understand uh, the concept. The process starts from a user who is trying to enter a website with his internet browser. In, it results in sending show me the website request to the relying party. The website needs to know who the user is, so it responds with you have to be authenticated. And the user can choose identity provider. He chooses Google, which is supported by the website, which means that uh, Google sign-in was configured by a web developer. A part of the uh, configuration was assigning an identifier and a secret key to the website. Both are shared between the website and Google. ID is not kept secret. The secret is a key that should never be shared with uh, anyone else than the identity provider, Google in this case. If you know the ID and the secret key for that ID, it means that you are the website or its owner. An ID is like a login to your bank account. It is unique, but if you share it with a theft, uh, he she still will not be able to steal your money. A secret key, key is like a password to your bank account. If you made it public, anyone could pretend he she is you and transfer your money out of your account. Going back to the scenario, uh, the user decided to sign in with uh, Google. The web application responds with uh, redirect instructions that contain the website ID. A part of the response is encrypted with a secret key. The browser redirects to the Google sign-in page providing the website ID and the encrypted part so Google knows the source of the request. When user successfully logs in, Google asks the user to agree on a data scope to share with the relying party. This scenario assumes the user agrees so Google generates one-time authorization code, encrypts it with uh, the secret key and sends it back with a redirect request to the browser. The browser's browser goes to the relying party website forwarding uh, the encrypted authorization code. The relying party decrypts it using the secret key and reads the authorization code. Notice that the authorization code is known only by Google and the relying party. Even the user is not able to decrypt it as he she does not know the secret key. The authorization code allows the relying party to ask Google for an access token. In turn, the access token can be used to request user data from Google. Google validates the token and the data scope agreed by the user and provides the relying party with requested data. Now, the relying party website knows the user identity and can follow him her to go in. This is how OAuth2 works in a typical case. There are multiple identity providers that can be used by web applications. The ones here are only examples. There are many more. If you still hesitate to use OpenID OAuth2, keep in mind that a user does not have to create a new account in your system. People do not like to create many accounts. We are more keen to use the one we have rather than create, trying to remember a new password. If I trust Google that they keep my credentials safe, I do not need to the same level of trust to the relying party 
as they never see my password. As a web application developer, you benefit as well. Creating a custom login system is a well-known field, but it still requires a lot of coding. Passwords in the database should be hashed, they uh, should have expiration dates, reset and change password functionality must be implemented. Moreover, you should not allow any password to be set by a user. It should be rejected if it is too simple. It is a lot of work that can be avoided by integrating with an identity provider. In many cases, legal site is simpler with OAuth 2 uh, because you might not need to gather and process PII data like email addresses, first and last names. 